Rio, Kyoto, Paris, those kinds of treaties have done virtually nothing. I'm going to show you something that you don't see very often, but I think everyone should see this. And it's going to be a little complicated, but I think it's also incredibly uh, helpful. So if you look at the temperature impact of Paris, remember Paris was this treaty that everyone uh, agreed to. Trump is threatening to throw, uh, you know, throw it out, but, but you know, fundamentally everybody agreed that we were going to do something in Paris. And it was hailed as this, oh, we've solved kind of global warming. If you look at this, so I'm going to show you over here how much CO2 we emit. And then I'm going to show you over here well, I was hoping I'd show you over here, but maybe I will in just a second. So these are the historical emissions that we've seen from 2000 until 2015. Obviously, we don't know more than that. This is the business as usual scenario. So if we didn't do anything, and obviously there are lots of different business as usuals, this is the average of all the major uh, business as usual scenarios. Over here, you see the output of the, one of the main symbol UN climate models. So it's totally, totally uncontroversial. It's called MAGIC. It was partly funded uh, by the EPA. If you just plug this in, you get a sense of what is the temperature going to be. And you can see the temperature both in degrees centigrade and in degrees Fahrenheit over here. So basically, we're going to see a temperature increase by the end of the century by almost 4 degrees or uh, almost 7 degrees Fahrenheit. This is if we don't do anything. All right. So take a look. This is what happens if we do Keo uh, sorry Paris. And this is the official estimate from the UNFCCC, so the ones that organized uh, Paris for the UN, they estimate that we will cut this much. This is the promise if everyone does everything they promise. Of course, remember, this would be a first uh, in the world if we actually managed to do that. But let's assume that we do that. This is the Paris promise. We estimate that's 56 gigatons uh, 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 cumulative over the next 15 years. So I'm just going to put 56 uh, gigatons in there. If you run this in the model, this is the temperature outcome that you get. Oh, wait, you can't actually see the difference. Can you see there's a black line there? It's just, you know, uh, as Thomas Schelling, one of our Nobels, liked to point out, if you don't have a very, very fine pencil, he was a guy from back then, right? If you don't have a very fine pencil, you can't see the difference, right? The difference is 0 0.04 degrees or 0 0.07 degrees Fahrenheit. But you could imagine that not only are we promising this, remember, uh, Paris only goes to 2030, but if we assume that we're going to keep this promise all the way through the century, so basically this, that is Paris extended, and that gives us 540 gigatons of CO2 that we cut. Well, let's run that through the model. That gives us this graph. So we get a slightly thinner line. We actually reduce our temperature output by 0.18 degrees, or about 0.3 degrees Fahrenheit. Very little. You do get some, but very little. Now, this is not what you've heard, because what you've heard is that we're going to cut a lot more. This is what you know, the, the, the most quoted one, New York Times, a lot of other publications use this. It's called the Climate Action Tracker. They estimate that this is what will come out of Paris. Notice, not only are they assuming much, much more than what uh, the UN themselves think is the maximal output of the Paris Agreement, but they're also assuming that we'll just continue to dramatically reduce. This is about 3,000 gigatons of CO2. So they're assuming you know, basically 50 times more than what Paris has actually done. And that would give us a reduction in temperature of about 1.1 degrees, so a significant reduction. It would still be above 2 degrees, which is sort of the international climate target. And that's the last thing I just wanted to show you. This is what it takes to cut to get to 2 degrees, which is what everyone talks about. And remember, this is the higher end target of Paris. They actually talk about 1.5 degrees, and nobody has any idea of how we would get there. Uh, but this is the two degree target, and there's different ways you could get to it, but this is one of the accepted ones. This is the UN Environmental Protection, uh, uh, sorry, Environment Program, uh, their, uh, their estimate, and this reduces 6,000 gigatons. And then we actually stay, uh, you can see that up here, uh, then we stay below two degrees. So notice what we've talked about here. This is what the world has promised at very best. This was a world without Trump and all that other stuff. Then we would do this. And we wouldn't be able to tell the difference. This is the most ambitious one. And we can just tell the difference. This is what we mostly talk about. And this is what we've actually promised. So, and this is worth pondering. Just notice this, that the 
Paris Agreement is less than 1% of what it takes to just get to two degrees. So it's a little bit like going on a diet and then you know, eat the first salad and say, hey, done, right? <laughs> no. And this, of course, is phenomenally hard. This bit is phenomenally hard. This bit, I don't know how we're going to do that anytime soon. And quite frankly, very few people have any good sense of how we would do that because it's very costly. If you take a uh, look at the cost of Paris promises, and this is based on all the major energy economic models from Stanford, uh, typical reduction in GDP growth, uh, and I'm just going to show you very briefly for the US, again, if we actually did the Obama promise of cutting uh, 26, I'm only looking at the lower end, 26%, and did it most effectively, it would cost $154 billion a year. That's not the end of the world by any means, but it's not a trivial cost. If the EU does what they're promised in the most effective policy, it would cost 305 billion, China 200 billion, Mexico 80. Those are the only countries that we actually have good data for. And so I'm just gonna estimate the rest, which is about 20%. So I'm just gonna add up that and say that's 20% of the cost. And that leads you to a little less than a trillion dollars. I'm just gonna say a trillion dollars for, 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 for ease of this. But of course, remember, this is if everyone does all the right things effectively. If there's anything we've known is that climate policies are phenomenally ineffective. So the European policies, for instance, we have very good data that shows that about twice as costly. And so the most likely policy is that all of these are gonna be double. So we were talking about uh, almost $2 trillion. So a cost of one to $2 trillion per year for the rest of the century will buy you a reduction in temperature of something that's almost immeasurable. We need to invest a lot more in R&D, so we did a, a whole Copenhagen consensus on climate with 27 of the world's top climate economists and three Nobel laureates looking at what are the smartest ways to do this. Basically what they said was we need to invest a lot more in energy R&D, green energy. You know, basically make future green energy so cheap everyone will want to buy it also the Chinese and the Indians and everybody else. And that will only happen if you invest a lot more. This is one of the things that Bill Gates had been driving. Obama was also on the forefront of this. And so pretty much all nations have signed up to doubling it. We're saying we should increase it sixfold. Uh, and that would, unlike the present day policy, actually fix global warming in the long run because it would enable technologies with a very high percentage, obviously we can't guarantee, but with a very high percentage to actually fix it. And just to show you, we estimate the EU climate policy for every dollar spent will probably uh, do about three sets of avoided climate damage. So that's good. You know, you spend a dollar and you do some good, but not very much. Uh, but if you focused on green R&D, you could actually do $11 of good. You could do thousands of times better.